Um, I think there should be a lot of activity in the back leg. Um, I mean, I think there's a lot of activity in both legs, but, um, but I think um, with all of the standing poses, the, the legs are the foundation, and so that's the more that we can find kind of the, the work, the strength in the legs, the more that's going to help to create some ease in the upper body. So that's kind of just generally true for most standing poses. Um, but I think particularly for this one, um, I think it's really important actually to try to really um, uh, engage the muscles of the back leg, and that would include the quadriceps. So you will sometimes see people will kind of will bend their knee, and and again, it's kind of that can be a way of it can be a way of kind of getting around um, the 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 hip flexibility issue. So if I bend my knee, that allows my thigh bone to come more forward. I don't know if I can do it with my heel down, but something like that, right? That allows my thigh bone to come more forward. But the problem is, what it does is it starts to create some compression on the outside of my knee and it starts to overstretch the inside of the knee. So it's not such a good position for the knee. So I would, I would like to see people really engaging the quadriceps to fully straighten the knee. And then when we engage the quadriceps, that's the action of pulling the kneecap up um, because the quads are attached onto the, their tendons attached to the kneecap. So I feel like that engagement of the quadriceps helps you really fully lengthen through the back leg, which I think is important. Um, and then, so if you don't have that, if the knee starts to bend, then you start putting, you start creating like a little bit of, a little bit of stress on the inner knee. And then it also starts to lift the outside of the foot. You start kind of losing the, um, the, the, the grounding through the back foot. Um, and, uh, you know, I would say that you want to have some engagement, not just in the quads, but in many muscles in the back, in the back leg. Um, it's easy when you come into this pose to just allow gravity to pull the pelvis downward um, to bring that back hip into hip extension. Um, when you do that, um, if you're just sinking down into gravity, it's going to tend to create a lot of pull across the, the psoas tendon, which can create some, sometimes some overstretching of the psoas tendon. And then that can contribute to a little bit of instability at the hip joint, allows the thigh bone to get push too far forward. Um, so um, I find it's often helpful to really think about trying to find a little bit more active hip extension in the back leg. So actually using the gluteal muscles, um, the gluteus maximus particularly. Um, it's easy to get into this pose and not actually do anything with your gluteus maximus. Um, um, your hamstrings are also hip extensors, so your hamstrings are also helping with the hip extension. Um, but, um, but I think that if you engage the gluteus maximus, it will help to create a little more stability around the, um, the hip joint itself. Um, it's also, uh, when we lower down, we don't actually have to do anything active with the hip flexors um, to bring us down, because again, gravity is kind of helping to bring us down. But I think if we consciously engage the hip flexors in the front of that the front of the hip of the back leg, I think that's also helpful for creating stability. So we can create a co-contraction between the extensors, which are the gluteal muscles, and the hip flexors on the front of the hip, and that's gonna help to create more stability around the hip. Um, but if, you are, if your knee is tending to bend in this position, so engaging your quadriceps will help to straighten the knee, but also engaging the gluteus maximus is gonna help because the gluteus maximus has attachment onto the back of the thigh bone, and when the gluteus maximus contracts, it's going to pull the thigh bone backward like this, which will also assist with the straightening of the knee. So it's getting the, the hip extensors working. Um, the hamstrings as well um, are working, and they can assist with that hip extension. Their job is to bend the knee also, so that's a little bit more complicated, but just in terms of their function of hip extension, it can help to, um, to keep the back knee straight. Um, and I, I think it's important to do that because you can definitely get some, you can get some problems with this back knee if you're not um, active. You know, the thing that the, the knee does not do, it's not supposed to bend sideways. Um, and I, I will sometimes see people where 
if they don't have engagement in those muscles in the back leg, the knee starts to kind of cave in a little bit like this. We start getting the inside of the knee overstretched and then putting a little compression on the outside, and so that's not good for the knee.